First, cell activity. In this higher tier program, we'll look in more detail at the transport of material in and out of cells and at cell division. First, cell transport. In the Foundation Biology program, we saw how particles can leave and enter a cell by diffusion and osmosis. Diffusion and osmosis are both passive transport. They need no energy input from the cell. For the higher tier, you also need to know about active transport through the cell membrane. This does need energy input from the cell. Here, particles are moved from outside the cell, where there are fewer of them, to inside the cell, where there are more. This is done by carrier proteins that can pick up specific molecules and move them through the cell wall against the concentration gradient, in the opposite direction to what would happen with passive diffusion or osmosis. This process requires the input of energy from the cell, which is supplied by respiration. See if you can note down three differences between passive and active transport through the cell membrane. You can set it out in a table like this. You might have something like this. In passive transport, the movement of particles is random, while in active transport, the movement of particles is selective. In passive transport, the movement is down the concentration gradient, while in active transport, it's against the concentration gradient. Passive transport does not need energy from the cell, while active transport does need energy input from the cell. That's it for transport in and out of cells. This section is about cell division. All cells divide by mitosis for growth, while sex cells divide by meiosis. For the higher tier paper, you need to know a bit more about these two kinds of cell division. First, mitosis. During mitosis, the chromosomes become shorter, thicker and clearly visible. Each chromosome replicates and now consists of paired chromatids joined by a centromere. The chromosomes line up at the centre and then split at the centromere. The nuclear membrane breaks down and the sister chromatids move to opposite ends of the cell where new nuclear membranes form around them. During the growth phase that follows, an exact copy is made of each chromatid. This produces two cells, both identical to the parent cell. Next, meiosis. Meiosis is also known as reduction division because the daughter cells contain only half the genetic information of the parent cell. This is important because when sex cells fuse during sexual reproduction, that restores the number of chromosomes. During meiosis, two separate cell divisions take place. Just as in mitosis, when the cell is about to divide, the chromosomes become visible and produce replicas, each chromosome made of two chromatids. The next step is different from mitosis. Homologous pairs of chromosomes line up near the centre and the nuclear membrane breaks down. The homologous chromosomes move apart and the cell divides in two and the chromosome number in each part is halved. This is called reduction division. Now for the second cell division. The chromosomes containing two chromatids then separate and move to opposite ends. The cell membrane pinches and each cell divides again. Four daughter cells are produced, each with half the number of their parent chromosomes. <laughs> 